As I'm arriving here at San Bernardino bus stop, waiting for my next ride, recording everything I can using whatever memory I have left on this camera, speeding through clips that would otherwise take a while and would take up a lot of space, plus it would make the footage a lot longer than it need to be. So I condense two hours worth of footage down to about 20 minutes or so, but anyhow, I'm about to make this lengthy trip heading to Mexico on these Greyhounds so this is going to be a very tedious ride as I try to enjoy watching the scenery as much as I can traveling south in the rest of the state of California. I certainly have some interesting tales to tell along the way plus I'll be meeting my uncle for the very first time so here's where it all starts. This is Land Rider 7th, aka LR7, land here. Just when I thought the bus was gonna leave, all of a sudden, it decided to break down right around the corner of the exit. And now, I had to wait for a good six hours for the mechanics to show up, waiting in the sun of over 90 degree weather, here in the desert of Indios, California. As normal as it seems, what caught my attention is those train carts, which isn't any kind of cargo. It looks like they're transporting military vehicles like tanks. Just like some of these videos that I've seen where some guys and their camera phones took video of a huge line of trains full of vehicles being transported from one place to another in the most discreet way possible. Only so it ends up online titled War is Coming Very Soon to a neighborhood near you. The end times are near. And this is proof of such signs. So grab your popcorn and your tinfoil hats as we witness the war train passing by before our very eyes. So you should ask yourself, are you ready for World War III? Okay, nothing to see, moving on. It's not very common that I get to travel like this, even though I do have a car and I could just drive myself there, but due to some circumstances, it's best that I just take the bus as it may be costly to even get the permit, which should have been a lot shorter if it wasn't for the fact that this happened. But what can I say? As difficult it is to even lay down in these uncomfortable seats, I took the time to look at the scenery, seeing plain desert to some agriculture to a giant lake, probably the ocean, even crossing a town or two, as well as making a few detours until we reach to the place where we need to be. And this place is called Calexico, California. This is the part where we'll have to go on foot in order to cross the border. So in my case, there's no need to even hop over a fence. I can just enter this building and go from there. I'm quite surprised that I'm able to just walk towards the other side without any extra clearance or special permissions, which makes it fairly quick. I just put my bag into the scanners and other than that, I'm on my way to this maze going on a one-way path to get to the other side of the border. This is a really sketchy area. I could imagine how many people crosses this side daily and you can even tell by some scribbles on the wall to say that they were there. I could imagine if you were to have a job on one side of the country and your actual place is across another, it would probably be a hassle to having to go back and forth, especially if you're coming to the states. Thank you. 
And right away there are stores, little stands, selling you things, hoping that you'd pay them in dollars so they can overcharge you for something that they got for a lot cheaper from the states, showing that they discriminate towards American tourists. In that case, I'm just going to stick with going to an actual store. For all I know, the food is most likely contaminated due to the pollution around the surrounding area. Let's not forget that there are some sketchy people around. Apparently, everything looks expensive if you think about dollars. But in reality, this is going by pesos. And these prices translated into USDs, they're probably not that different when it comes to prices. Just using different currency is the only difference, or at least at the time of recording this video. I finally get to meet my uncle for the first time. Walking these streets sure does feel like I'm in a different world. And everyone around you speaks nothing but Spanish. I have no problem in understanding it since I sound like a complete gringo when I speak the language. And now looking around town to see what's happening other than witnessing someone getting pulled over and more doors that are open up this late. We're taking a quick stop to the second floor as we witness a vending machine that sells donuts and entering my uncle's gym in which he has a very interesting take on how this gym is set up. Since spirituality and minimalism are two major parts on what he believes in. Before we head to his place, we gotta make a quick stop to the grocery store and get some food since we're hungry and we need something in our stomachs. Looks like any other typical grocery store here and there with the aisles and food and whatnot. But the prices, sometimes they sure throw me off, especially if you read them as dollars. Where bread looks expensive? The avocados are pricey and the chips are overpriced, but that's pesos for you. Also, I want to mention that since my uncle is big into spirituality and also a portion of metaphysics and the paranormal, although not a ghost hunter himself since he is against doing such things. His thing is more like studying life itself. But what else can I say about it? We'll visit his place and see for ourselves how much it reflects him. Also, forgot to mention, he encountered UFOs. Plus he has evidence to back it up in the form of still images that will be shown at the end of this video. Talking about a very simplistic looking area, this shelf seems to have a device that does something. If you happen to be invested in this company trying to sell and recruit people, please seek help. It's a scam and you're never getting your money back. So as I walk over to see this, at first I thought I was in some kind of church with the Bible open as well as other little things like some statues, a gift. 
a quartz and a crystal ball at first glance so as i enter the massage room they look like they're surrounded by these mysterious looking boxes where supposedly it shoots out a magnetic field supposedly to keep the room at a certain frequency but may also damage electronic devices if left here for too long quite some setup for a room I'm spending the night in. What to expect for a Reiki room? That night, I don't recall having a good night's sleep since I was laying on the floor with nothing more than a sheet of blankets and padding from the gym my uncle took from. But what do you expect from someone that doesn't spend too much time in his own home? While he's away doing other things, I'm just gonna go walk around and visit a few places, like a mall, starting with Liverpool. You know, I can't say it enough, but looking at some of these prices still makes me think that they're pricey, overly expensive. Well, so much for being from another country that's wealthier. Now, I'm heading to this mall. There's a lot of stuff to check out that I am yet to discover. Hey look, a piñata of a Super Saiyan Goku from Dragon Ball Super. And more culturally appropriate piñatas that represent domestic violence against women. And these belts. While still at the same mall, all I did was walk across and the next thing you know, I happen to be in a place that looks like I'm in a Walmart. Now, walking towards a small electronics section right in front of us, and looky here, a Nintendo Classic and smartphones that are overpriced, not really. Well, I haven't seen these type of videos in a very long while, can't believe they still have them here. I'm gonna be going elsewhere while I walk across a Mexican Hot Topic. Really nice waterfall with colors and water with coloring shooting out from the floor. Skipping the walk out of the mall, we're going to meet up with my uncle since he finally got off of work so he can take us to some places right around the corner into some sweet store where they have very pricey sweets. Pretty affordable if you think about it. Nearly gave me sweet tooth. Other than that, there isn't really much else for me to say aside from enjoying the scenery as we head to the next mall. It kind of reminds me of California in some places, except everything is in Spanish. And there's a good number of culture-specific monuments across town. Although I never got the chance to ride into the buses here in Mexico, I heard that they are way better than the ones in the US. It's like riding in a public living room on wheels with snacks and stuff you can get, like drinks and free Wi-Fi, or even watch movies while you're laying back at a couch or something like that. Maybe next time, I'll give it a try. Well, here we are at the third mall. My uncle is going to park his car somewhere and then and continue looking around for overpriced crap you find at any mall, really. This car could be yours if you watch movies at this place. Well, I guess we're just gonna go upstairs and check out what else there is. 
walking around here and some girl just fell. We're going to this store where there's a guy with a yellow shirt listening to his headphones. As we go and check out some of these overpriced electronics from the past decade that went unsold for years. And this Nintendo Switch thrown in. Not much else to say other than holding my camera awkwardly in public trying to come up with something else to say but failing while I'm at it. What an amateur with a 4K camera I turn out to be. But yeah, they also have some fairly modern stuff. And no, we're not quite there yet with holographic technology. As much as I'd like to show more of the places and people I was talking to, but due to limited memory on my camera and for privacy reasons, I had to skip everything that took place around this time. It wasn't really appropriate to record them just like that. So instead, I just have footage heading back to my uncle's place to spend the night before leaving. But then the video itself is already long enough as is. So I had to condense two hours into 20 minutes. As much as I'd like to stay a little longer and explore other places, I'm gonna have to head back home. So I'm packing my stuff and leaving my uncle's place. So he'll be giving me a ride to the bus stop. So once again, I'm gonna be recording some more places around this time of the morning. I'll be skipping and speeding up some of these videos and get straight to the point, or at least what I see the interesting enough to keep around. Last thing I can do is say goodbye to my uncle and hope we can see him again, if I ever do see him again, to tell more stories about his paranormal encounters with evidence and whatnot. You know, I had to admit, that mural of graffiti art looks pretty awesome. In a way, it reminds me of the days when I used to live in California, where some of the neighborhoods is covered with taggings and someone's name on it, or just kids trying to be edgy with their tags and whatnot, just like their favorite rappers. Talk about a lengthy line to get to the other side of the border. I could imagine how annoying it would be trying to go past these security checkpoints while on a lengthy road trip to North America. But then there are so many people from Mexico that really wants to move into the states and live their lives there. But unfortunately, it's not that easy for them to do so for how expensive it is to actually become a citizen. I could see why they would resort to crossing illegally or the means to get there, risking their lives just so their children can have a better life. As American citizens, kind of like how I can just cross the border using my passport, proving that I'm a citizen, and they just let me in without any problems. All cause I was born in the States. The fact that there are even borders separating two countries really shows that not everyone can just enter without very specialized permissions and whatnot, which can really divide people and cultures for as long as civilization has been around. Due to current situations and the political environment going on between the two countries, it looks like the wall is going to be there for a very, very long time until someone decides to break it down or if either one country or the other 
falls apart for whatever reason other than incompetence from those in charge or other circumstances that's yet to happen. Apparently, there had to be a stop at a checkpoint where the immigration police is searching in this guy's bag. Apparently, it somehow caught their attention, but who knows how this guy's gonna turn out. If he got caught entering the country illegally or is smuggling drugs. Spoiler alert, they let him go. That was the most intense moment that happened that day. But overall, the trip has been relatively short and uncomfortable, yet interesting all at the same time. Got to meet my uncle in person and had the chance to leave the country for the first time. So that was something to remember about that's worthwhile. And I look forward to go on another adventure once more and explore more places later on. Till then, this is LR7, logging out.